Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about poplar. Not a very popular crop is poplar, but it is a crop that has been in Farm Sim for quite a long time. Now, I'm going to show you an infographic. This is from the Farm Sim Academy. This is over on the Giants website. And this information is most likely from FS22. But for the most part, it should hold pretty steady within FS25. This video is one going to validate some of the information in this particular infographic and hopefully explain how you go about putting poplar in a field and ultimately how you harvest it and what can you do with it. Now looking here at the Academy page, it's rather interesting. Yield per hectare is basically undisclosed. I think what you're gonna find is harvesting poplar is a exercise in patience and maybe Maybe Giants didn't actually do the math to figure out how much it's going to yield per hectare because of the time it takes to do it. Average selling price also I found was interesting that it was blank. Seeds per hectare is going to be 1,500 liters. Now, this is going to be interesting because there's multiple ways of planting poplar. What we see here is a very dense planting as if you basically just went into the dev console and said, give me a field of poplar. And there it is. But you're gonna see when we actually go time to plant it ourselves, I wanna hire a helper just to show you kind of how the helper does it. And you're gonna see that this is gonna be spaced out further apart. So ultimately your yield is gonna depend on how densely you planted the poplar to begin with. Grain duration is listed as 12 months. It's gonna be able to be planted March through August. And it's basically gonna be able to be harvested year round after it is ready to harvest. Poplar is also a forever crop, in meaning that once you plant a crop, you're going to be able to harvest it time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. Basically, once you go through the effort of putting poplar in the ground, you never have to plant it again unless you go and plow up the field for some reason. Now, let's go and take a look at some of the machinery that we're going to need in order to work with poplar because we do need some fairly specialized machinery. Here in our vehicle shop, let's first talk about how we're gonna be putting this poplar in the ground. We're gonna need to come down here to our forestry section, and then we're gonna to come to tree planters, and we're gonna to need to use the Damcon PL75. This is gonna be what we use to put our poplar in the ground. It's gonna require 120 horsepower, and we are going to purchase poplar in pallets. We're gonna find that here under our saplings category. And one pallet of poplar is 2,000 liters and is gonna cost you $280. This is the only way that you are putting this crop in the ground. Once you have placed it in the ground, well, then we have just growing season. And then we have to talk about harvest. We can harvest it in one of two ways. We can either make bio bales using the Anderson bio baler WDWB55. This will basically make round bales of wood chips, if you will. It's gonna require 200 horsepower to operate and it has got a fairly long neck here and this thing will swing left and right. And then in addition to the bio baler, you really should also equip your tractor with a bumper. And this is going to be used to push the poplar down in front of your tractor if you are operating the baler in a direct from behind configuration. That way you're not driving straight over the poplar and running your tractor into it. So this is a combination. You're going to want the bumper and the bio baler itself. Another way of harvesting poplar is going to be to use a forage harvester. And you can use any of these forage harvesters. In this video, we're going to be making use of the Kloss Jaguar 990 in the unstoppable configuration. Why? Because I just liked it. And that is the only reason. In addition to our forage harvester, we're going to need a special header in the New Holland 130FB. This is the poplar header, and it is going to basically capture the plant or the little tree with this border here, this bar, and then run it down here into the cutter. That is then going to cut it off and run it into the knives in the forage harvester. 
which is then going to chop it up into little wood chips. You will then need a trailer in order to collect those wood chips. And basically, ultimately, any trailer is going to suffice. For this video, we're using the DD240 073 2XXL in its 34,000 liter capacity. So here we have our Dutes Far 6000 series tractor with our planter and our pallet of poplar in the back. We have our Kloss Jaguar with our new Holland header. We have the bumper for the bio baler. And of course we have our trailer. Now I have already gone ahead as we have seen in other videos prepared field 41 on Riverbend Springs by having it fully fertilized, it is fully limed, it has been plowed, and it is ready to go for planting. It is March, and as the infographic stated, we're going to be able to put poplar in the ground from March through August, and once it's in the ground, well, basically we can harvest it year-round, assuming that it is in a ready-to-harvest state. Why don't we go ahead and talk about putting this stuff in the ground? Sure, let's do that. Now, this tree planter is going to require to be basically used in a field. So if we lower this right here and we turn it on, it is basically going to do absolutely nothing. Because I have reconfigured field 41 into simply a staging area. So it is no longer a field. We do have the ability to create fields, so if we did want to place poplar somewhere that we didn't have a field, we could hit Y to create a field and go about the operation that way. I'm going to line this thing up and let's just go ahead and hit H and hold that down and we will see the hired helper here. He wants to do a bunch of headlands and then he's going to do some up and down passes. Sure. That's fine with me. Let's start with the um, yeah, let's just start with the headlands just for fun. And hire them off. And I'll jump out. And we can see we now have our poplar basically in two little rows. And these are our saplings. These are our little seeds, if you will. Uh, stones. Great. So if you have stones enabled, you will see stones popping up as a result of the planting process. I have a, um, a hate relationship with stones. I wouldn't say it's a love-hate relationship. It's just a hate relationship. I grew up where it was really rocky. Like, you couldn't put a shovel in the ground without, bang, hitting a rock. So, good luck digging any size of a hole. So, uh, I'm just going to, for the sake of my sanity, come down here and turn stones off off thank you now let's go ahead and let this guy work for a little bit and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I mean basically by how poplar gets planted by default so you can see what I'm talking about here with respect to if we if we let the hired helper plant our crop we're gonna get some pretty big spacing between our rows basically it's it's like it's, it's it's almost like it's skipping right skip row skip row i didn't tell it to skip rows this isn't skipping lanes this is just how poplar gets planted if you let the hired helper do it now of course if you did it then you could come in here and fill these areas in and put it as dense as you wanted to but when it comes time to harvest, basically you're going to run the risk of trampling over a bunch of crop 
and doing crop damage if this stuff is too close together. Now, if you disable crop damage, then sure, you could do it and you wouldn't have to worry about it. But this is how the game wants to plant Poplar. And that's why when I said the infographic here is showing a very, very dense planting of the crop, this is what you would get if you literally came in here into the game and used the console to tell the game to plant the crop as opposed to actually letting the game plant it itself with a hired helper. Um, but this is why I wanted to hire the helper was so that you could kind of see the process and see how the game wanted you to plant it. So, but in the end, you can plant it however you want. If you want to come in here and plant it super dense, that's fine. It's just going to take a whole lot longer in order to harvest. But of course you will get more for your field, right? So let's go ahead and get this thing finished out. It's going to take a while. It's probably been running for a good 10 minutes now. And uh, we've managed to do a total of three headlands around the field in that 10 minute time. So yeah, we'll keep an eye out on the time. It is set to 1x. So when we come back, we'll see where we are with a fully planted field using a hired helper. So things will be spaced out like this. So I wanted to demonstrate, we have used almost an entire pallet and I've got basically three passes or so left. And I have 11 liters or 11 units worth of poplar left. Now you can unload this harvester when you're done by hitting I and it will unload the pallet. So once you load the pallet, right, you're not stuck with the pallet. And I just wanted to demonstrate, I have another new pallet over here. And I want to demonstrate how you load from that. You're going to pull up your side the pallet, you're going to hit R, and it's going to load it onto the planter. So that's how you do that. Once you are done, again, you hit I to unload the pallet, and you can hit R to load it back up. So we are definitely going through more um, poplar than we uh, than the infographic would lead you to believe because it said it only was going to require um, 1500 liters or 1500 units per hectare we know this field is less than one hectare in size or about that so yeah, we've already used over 500 units more Planting it the way the hired helper wants to plant it. So it's not like we're planting it extra dense either. And it's been about an hour, right? We're at 49 minutes. So I would say, you know, give us 15 minutes, 10 minutes for the intro. Um, yeah, we're sitting, probably sitting close to 50 minutes to an hour once we are done putting this in the ground. So when we're all said and done, we used about 2,260 liters worth of poplar for our field because here we are at 1740 with our second pallet. And then we have our entire field here ready to go. That does say that it is weeds are growing. So I'm going to go ahead and spray this field with herbicide just to knock the weeds down before we go and move into a potential growth state with our saplings which would then cause us to have crop destruction okay so here we are in April and you can see we really don't have too much growth left or happening with an estimated growth cycle of 11 months well, it means we're going to have to fast forward until February next year in order to possibly see our crop ready to harvest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast forward each month. And instead of coming back to you for 10 months and going, oh, hey, here we are in May. Nothing's happened. Here we are in June. Oh, we had growth. Here we are in July. Nothing's happened. 
Here we are in August. Nothing's happened. Here we are in September. You, you get the point. I'm going to only show you when we have noticeable growth stages happening. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward to May. If visually it looks the same, I'm just going to move on until June and only show you what things look like when they change. So it took all the way to August before we saw our first real noticeable change in growth with respect to our poplar. So here we have it, August. So in theory, you have from March till August to do any field work, theoretically, that would then possibly cause crop destruction. But uh, now that we're in August, you're definitely gonna get crop destruction. Let's go ahead and move forward and see how long it's gonna take to get to the next step. So it's now March, a full year since we last put our poplar planter in the ground. And while it is not listed as ready to harvest, it has definitely grown a lot. It's now definitely over our heads. And I think now you can see why this spacing is going to be important when it comes time to harvest. I feel like I'm walking through a cornfield. At any rate, let's go ahead and move on. So it is now July of our second year. So if I did my math right, we are looking at 16 months from when we put this in the ground in March the previous year to now July the second year and our crop is now well ready to harvest ready to go okay so back to the various ways we have to harvest we can harvest using a bio baler which would probably be a great way to harvest if you are by yourself in single player the other way to harvest is going to be with a forage wagon and the forage wagon is going to work if you are better with friends, right? Because someone's got to drive the forage wagon, someone's got to drive the trailer, unless you attach the trailer to the back of the forage wagon. So to that end, I feel that the bio baler is probably going to be more user friendly for single player. So I've already have our our bumper attached and our bio baler attached to our tractor. And there's some controls to be aware of. Left click up and down it is going to raise and lower kind of this guard in front of the baler. I don't know if I can if I can get it shown here, but you can see it's moving up and down on the baler. And then right click up and down is going to change the swing of the baler. So right click up, we'll make it swing to the left. Right click down, we'll make it swing out to the right. So we're gonna turn the baler on. Let's swing out here to the right. We are going to lower the baler down. And off we go. So it is basically cutting the poplar. You see the fill type is listed as wood chips. Once it's full, we're gonna hit Y to unload, just like we would any other round baler. And well, there you go. And we can turn on auto drop off by hitting Z. And here we have our first bale of wood chips or our first bale of poplar. I think you can see now why the spacing can be beneficial here. And 
And if we didn't have this room to run alongside the field, right? We can right click, let's move this arm back to basically center. This is where the bumper comes into play. In theory, we're pushing it out of the way. Visually, though, it's 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 a bit of a it's a bit of a mess, right? So again, that's why I kind of run to the side if you could. a whole lot of wood chips off of this one hectare field and we've already made two nearly three bales and these bales are what, 2,000 liters a piece So let's also, I guess, demonstrate the forage harvester. So as you can see, this particular forest harvester does allow me to attach the tractor, the pipe out, and we will turn on the forage harvester, lower the header down. ability with farm sim 25 to see in the upper right corner the fill level of the trailer that is going to be extremely convenient not only if you have it attached but also if someone is running beside you to help you know if the, uh, the trailer is nearly, nearly full or not is pretty much how you're going to harvest your hop water. Now, I think I'm going to go ahead and finish harvesting this. And I'm going to keep track of how many trailers I fill up. And then I'll come back after that and you'll see kind of general time frame of how long it's taken to harvest this field how many wood chips we did get out of this field. But what's important to note is this poplar is now a forever crop. It will regrow. We no longer have to plant this. All we have to do post-harvest is do whatever we need to do with respect to fertilizing and weed control. Do not plow it. It's not going to regrow. I wouldn't mulch it either. I just wouldn't. So, no plowing, no mulching, just seed, lime if needed, fertilize it, not seed, fertilize it, lime it if needed, weed it, and in another 16 months, it will grow back and be ready to harvest again. Okay, so nearly an hour later, we are done harvest. That's an hour of real time, not an hour of game time. Well, since we are one-to-one, -one, it is an hour of game time anyway. But also, that's an hour of real life, my time. This field is now harvested. Poplar will grow back, as I've mentioned. So if we go ahead and advance, we should and will see that our harvested poplar will change and it will become growing again. We can also see that if we look at the harvested poplar, it is 0% fertilized. If we move off of that, 
it's 100% fertilized, right? So the field is going to have some pretty wonky states to it. Here we have fertilized, unfertilized, and like needs rolling, doesn't need rolling. There's no mulching going on. And right at this point in time, there's no lime that's needed. But at any rate, what we could come through here and do is we could fertilize this field after harvest, get it to 50% fertilization, and then sleep into the next day. And we'll see if it is growing again. Because we can't fertilize again until it changes its growth state. So again, we're gonna real quick fertilize and we'll advance back. As far as what did we get as far as our output? Well, you can see I have four full trailers over there. I have a partial trailer over there. And then we have the four bales that we also made over there. It turns out about 141,855 liters. Now, what is the exact number? I don't know. My guess is it's probably gonna be closer to 145,000 liters, maybe. I don't think it's gonna be 150,000 liters per hectare yield based on how the AI planted here because of the fact that I know, sorry, I know for a fact that when I was harvesting, there were occasions where I would accidentally destroy crop. Sure, probably for this type of video, I should have crop destruction turned off, but I don't. I typically play with crop destruction turned on, and that's how we have it here for this video. Because it's a very real thing. If you play with crop destruction on, you need to be careful when you're harvesting that you're not destroying your crop. So I know for a fact that I was destroying my crop a little bit because even with those rows spaced out, it's hard to get this forage harvester and get this trailer between these rows and not get too close to the next row and cause crop destruction or not trample over some as you're trying to make the turns on the end and everything. So I know that there was some level of crop destruction. So let's, let's say probably realistically Maybe 145,000 liters per hectare would be more realistic. August, we've gone one month. We're now growing again. Like I said, poplar is a forever crop. It will forever regrow. So we can now come through here and fertilize again. Get back to 100%. And really, at that point, you know, we are ready to, to rock and roll. Let this field go for another, what, 15 months? And then at that point, it will be ready to harvest again. So a pretty lightweight crop as far as what its overall demands are. Now, what can you do with poplar wood chips? What can you do with wood chips in general? Well, there's no production chain that uses wood chips. There are some production chains that have an output of wood chips amongst other things but there's no production chain that requires wood chips as an input. So the only use for wood chips is for retail. Send them straight to market, sell them, and see how much money you can get for them. Okay, so on that end, how much money can you get for wood chips? Well, if we look at our prices screen, we're gonna see we have an average low on easy of 507, an average high of $1,644 per thousand liters. It's a pretty darn good max price per a thousand liters, especially if you factor in that potentially for one hectare, we got 141,000 liters. And if we didn't have any crop destruction, I'm speculating we could have had as much as 145,000 liters. For what we got in our harvest, 141,000, 855 liters if we sold this at the max price of $1,644 per thousand liters. We're looking to clear $233,000 off of a one hectare field. It took maybe an hour to plant once, never again. That hour is gone, but we don't have to do it ever again. 
it takes maybe an hour every year and a half to harvest this crop. And I make nearly a quarter million dollars if I can sell it at its highest price on easy economy. That's that's pretty good, right? Is that not pretty darn good? So let's take a look here at our price in August, right? We are a five, 547. It's best price, farmer's market right next door. Great, 547. So $547 times 141. 0.855 because remember our price here even though it doesn't say it is based on per thousand liters that's seventy seven thousand six hundred dollars if we sell it right now so if i sell a full loaded trailer 28 times 547 i should get 500 what twenty eight thousand times 547. I'm going to get $15,316. Let's see. Poplar is a pretty good profit. I wonder why it's so unpopular. Maybe the complexity of harvesting it. Maybe the complexity of planting it. Although you plant it once and you're done. It's just like grass. Let's see how much money we get. Fifteen thousand three hundred twenty-six dollars. I estimated fifteen thousand three hundred sixteen. Give or take ten bucks. I'll take it. I'll take that every day. And again, if I wait till January and I try to sell this at my best price possible, we could clear two hundred and thirty thousand dollars off of just just one field. So, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button. Let me know down. In the comments below, have you ever done Poplar? Are you going to be willing to give it a try now? Once you see how much money is actually worth. And just for funsies, let's chuck a bale onto here. Okay, let's just for funsies, chuck a bale on over on the other side. I don't even know if this, this side will take bales. There you go. $1,182 per bale because those are 2,000 liter bales a piece. All right, I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Again, please share this video with anyone that is a farm sim fan, anyone that you know that plays farm sim, anyone that may be interested in trying to maximize the amount, maximize the amount of money they're gonna make per hectare. It's gonna be hard to beat quarter of a million dollars per hectare with respect to profitability with poplar we're going to run through all the crops so if there is something that's more profitable i guess we will ultimately find out and until next time happy farming